Hey, welcome back to the next lesson on how to create Among Us in Unity. For this lesson, we'll show you how to create a hat menu for our character customization. Now, before we begin, please make sure that you're subscribed to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. All right, so here I have my waiting room scene open inside of Unity, and we need to add stuff to our customization menu canvas object. The first thing I've added is this tabs child object. This is a UI image or panel that I've sized and positioned to be above our color menu. This object then has three child button objects. The first I've called colors, the second I've called hats, and the third I've called pets. And we want to size and position these buttons so they divide the tabs object into thirds. For now we can then disable the interactable option for the colors button and the pets button. And finally, we'll want to modify the text child objects of each of these buttons so that they say colors, hats, and pets. Next, we want to create the hats menu, and you can do this by duplicating our colors menu. We'll then reset the color of each of these buttons so that the source image is white, and we'll add image objects as child to each of these buttons. We'll then replace the source image of each of these child objects to be one of the hat sprites from this new sprite sheet that I've compiled. You can download the sprite sheet for free on our website. You'll then just need to go through the regular process for slicing the sprite sheet. I've laid out the hat sprites to be on a 128 grid. Now a couple things to note, I've left the first button of our hats menu blank for just in case the player doesn't want to have a hat. Then if you want to have more hats available for your player, you would just create a scroll view with a masked out window. Now the next thing that we need to do is make one change to our player prefab and so we'll open that up. Now on our player prefab, we need to add one sprite object as child to our avatar sprite object. To do this, we could actually duplicate our part sprite object. I've then renamed this object to hat holder, and you'll want to delete the sprite image from the sprite renderer component. We can then also reposition this object so that it's sitting at the top of our player's head. Now once you've made this change to our player prefab, we'll go back to our scene and we'll open up our character customizer script. Inside the script, the first thing that we need to do is add a namespace up at the top, which is using unityengine.ui. Once you've added this, we'll go on to create some new variables. The first is another serialized field of type sprite, which is an array called all hats. We then have two serialized fields of type game object. The first is called color panel, and the second is called hat panel. These will be for navigating through our customization menu. And finally, we need two serialized fields of type button. The first First is called color tab button and the second is called hat tab button. Once you have these variables created, we'll then go on to create another public function similar to our set color function, only this one is for setting the hat. So I have a public void function called set hat, and this function requires a parameter of type int called hat index. Inside this function, we need to access the local player and tell it which hat we want to wear. This function is going to be paired to each hat button in our menu, and inside this function, we need to access the local player and tell it which hat we want to wear. So I have auPlayerController.localPlayer.setHat, which is a function that we haven't created yet. So it'll be giving you an error at this moment, but don't worry about it. We're then going to pass in the sprite from our all hats array at the hat index. So I have all hats, square brackets, hat index. Now before we go on to fix this error, we're going to create two functions for navigating our menu system. These are public void functions. The first one is called enable colors, and the second is called enable hats. Inside these functions, we're doing pretty much the same thing, only we're inversing the values. So if you wanted to create one of the functions, you could then copy it for the other. Inside the enable colors function, we want to enable our color panel. So I have color panel dot set active and I'm passing in true. We then want to disable the hat panel. So I have hat panel dot set active and I'm passing in false. We then want to do the opposite values for the tab buttons. And so I have color tab button dot interactable equals false and hat tab button dot interactable equals true. And the reason why these values are inverted is because if the color panel is enabled, we then only want to give the player the option to switch to the hat menu. But once you have these four lines of code, you can then copy them and paste them into the enable hats function after which you want to flip all the bool values and once you've done this you can save 
leave the script and go over to the player controller script. Inside the script, we need to create two new variables. The first is a static variable of type sprite called my hat sprite, and the second is a sprite renderer called my hat holder. We then want to jump down to the start function, and here, after we get the my avatar sprite variable, we want to add a line of code where we initialize our my hat holder variable. And so I have my hat holder equals my avatar dot get child, and we want the second child, so I'm passing in a one. We can then do dot get component, and we're looking for a sprite renderer. We can then scroll down to the bottom of the start function, and here I have an if statement where we're checking to see if the my hat sprite variable does not equal null. If it does not equal null, then we can set the sprite image of our my hat holder variable. So I have my hat holder dot sprite equals my hat sprite. Now the last thing that we need to do for this script is create the set hat function. And so here I have a public void function called set hat. This function requires a parameter of type sprite which I've called new hat. Inside this function, we want to set the my hat sprite variable equal to new hat. And while we're at it, we want to set the sprite image of our my hat holder. So I have my hat holder dot sprite equals my hat sprite. Creating this function will fix the error that we're getting within our character customizer script. And finally, we can save all our scripts and go back to Unity. Now, once you're back inside Unity, we'll take a look at our character customizer script, and we need to initialize our all hats array. I've set the size of this array to 9, and I've left the first element as null, but then I've populated the rest of the array with each of the hats from our sprite sheet. And you'll just want to make sure that the hats are in the same order as you have in your hat menu going left to right. We then need to set the four navigation variables. The color panel variable is our color menu. The hat panel variable is our hat menu, the color tab button variable is the color button from our tabs object, and the hat tab button is the hat button from our tabs object. Now once you have all these variables set, we want to select our colors button that's a child to our tabs object. We'll then want to scroll down to the onclick event and click the plus sign, after which we'll drag our customization menu into this field and use the drop down menu to go to our character customizer script and select enable colors. We can then select our hats button and do the same thing, scroll down to the onclick event, click the plus sign, drag the customization menu into this field, use the drop down menu to select character customizer, but this time we're going to select the enable hats function. After this, we then need to select each button of our hats menu and scroll down to the on click event. If you duplicated the hat menu from the color menu, then you should already have the customization menu object in this field. And so you'll just need to select the drop down menu, go down to AU character customizer and select the set hat function. After which you can select each button and increment the static int parameter going from zero to eight. Now the last thing that we need to do before we can test our project is disable our hat menu. I'll then click play. All right, so here we have our colors menu and it seems like all the buttons are still working. And so we'll test out our navigation by clicking on the hats button, which disables our color menu and enables our hat menu. And I can go back and forth. From here, I can then click on any of the hat buttons. And there you can see that our player now has little devil horns. Now the last thing that we need to do is load into our game scene, so I'll click the next level button. And there we have our astronaut with the red color and the devil horns. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to add a hats menu to our character customization. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos.